from somewhere in Hollywood. It's the Tom Likas Show. Really? And now, and now, here he is, Tom Likas. Thank you for tuning in to the Tom Likas Show. This is where America gets together to talk about the issues you really care about. It's a different kind of a radio talk program. We're the radio talk show that is not hosted by a right-wing wacker or a convicted felon. No. I am your host. I got our telephone number. You're going to need it. It's 1-800-5800-TOM. 1-800-5800-866. Thank you for tuning in. Thanks for being part of our program. Here we are together again on the radio with wide open telephones on this Friday. A very hot, hot, hot Friday in Southern California. Anything goes here, anything at all. We can talk about anything that's on your mind. It can be anything we discussed on the air this week. Anything you think we should have talked about, you can call up, yell, scream, complain, jump up and down, as long as you're absolutely fascinating. If you're not, Dean J. DeBelio will kick your ass off the phone. No two ways about it. Eight years of kicking people's ass the hell off the pole. So if you think you can entertain an entire nation, you can call us here at 1-800-5800-TOM. 1-800-5800-866. And um, almost every week on uh, wide open telephones, we get calls from outside the country. If you are outside the United States, the regular 800 number won't work for you. So call this number. Outside the United States, call country code 1, area code 323, and the number 520-6211. That whole package again, that whole mouthful, 1-323-520-6211. Let's go to your calls at 1-800-5800-TOM. It's Daniel on the Tom Likas Show. Hello. Anything goes here, anything at all? Yes. Yes. Can you turn that a little louder, please? I can't hear it. Hey, Tom, this is Daniel. Um, hey, I'm just calling you to let you know, man, that you had the best show in freaking California, man. Well, thank you. I mean, I was, I mean, like I was telling you, your boy over there, I just moved from Florida. And I've been in, I used to live in, I, I've been in different states and I never heard a show like yours. No one has a show like this. Nowhere in the 51 states, man. 51 states? Are you counting uh, Canada? What are you counting? I'm counting Canada and I'm counting Puerto Rico, man. Right, that would be 52. Uh, yeah, but Puerto Rico, you know, it's fine. But Canada's around here. So, so you're telling me Puerto Rico is the 51st or the 52nd state? No, you know what? Puerto Rico will be the 51st. We're the first. I see. Canada will be the second. Canada is the 52nd state. Yeah, man. They're not going to be happy to hear that in Canada. <laughs> hey, man. Hey, and uh, you know what? Yesterday I was listening on to your show, and I heard this lady, y'all. Um, that um, she said that um, the only people that listen to your show is stupid Mexicans. Right. But did you remember that? Yes, I remember. We actually played a bit of that back on the program today. Yeah, but I mean, she didn't realize that, that she was a stupid too. That she's listening to your um, show. <laughs> That's right. I mean, I mean, come on! I was listening to the show and I was busting laughing. I was like. Dude, come on. You're listening to the show. You are a stupid woman. Come on, man. You know what I hate, too? What? When I hear men calling you to ask you what to do with a female. Come on, man. You got to be the biggest jerk to a woman. Use them and lose them. Dude, they are a devil without a tail. <laughs> Come on, man. 
<laughs> I mean, the only woman in this world that I respect is my mother. That's it. And there's uh, somebody else who doesn't respect her as much as you do, believe me. Hey, you know, I mean, hey, but you know what, man? You got the, the best <laughs> radio show, I mean. It's, it's good. Well, so I'm just calling you, man, and my respect to you. Well, thank you for that, Daniel. I appreciate that. 1-800-5800-TOM. That's our telephone number. Let's say hello here to Nick on the Tom Likas show. Hello. Hello. How are you? I'm fine. It's good to hear. It's good to hear. Um, I'm 23 years old. I'm calling to ask you about finances. Um, I'm born and raised here in L.A. Still living in um, L.A., love in L.A. Stuck here on the 405. Um, 23 year old, um, years old, um, doing what I think I should be doing. Want to know what else I should be doing, really. I don't know um, what you're doing. Okay, um, got a good job. I'm working in commercial real estate, property management, um, putting money in my 401k. Got about, um, $58,000 now in stocks. Made, um, stocks up like two grand this week. Um, so I just want to know what else I should be doing with my money and what else. Do you, do you have any loans? Do you uh, owe no, money on no. credit cards? No, I pay all my credit cards in full, own my car full out, no student loans. No debts? No debt. Oh. Uh -huh. Well, that's not bad. Well, uh, what are your investments in? Um, in terms of stocks? Yeah. Um, so the majority share is an IBM, but then there are others are just telecommunications and um, AT and T, the spirit. Um, well, no more than ten percent of of your total should be in any one stock. Okay, that's okay. number one. Okay, you need diversification. Okay, and uh, if you have you know twenty percent or fifty percent of your money in IBM or any stock, not a good idea. What, what do you think about mutual funds? I I own many mutual funds, and I recommend them, especially to young people who are just getting started investing. Okay. Okay. Um, what? Okay, and then in terms of mutual funds, how, what percent should I have in mutual funds would you recommend? Well, it, it's not what you should have in mutual funds. It's what percent you would have in stocks as opposed to bonds or other investments. And... Um, you know, they, they, uh, a general formula they give, and I, I don't necessarily subscribe to it, but it just gives you a frame of reference, mm -hmm. is that the percentage of your investments in stocks should be 100% minus your age. So if you're 23, that would mean like 77% or roughly three quarters of your investment should be in stocks, 25% they would say in bonds. Um, but I, it's a, it also depends on what kind of bonds you're going to be in. Okay. And I think uh, these bonds called TIPS, which are Treasury Inflation Protected Securities, uh -huh. uh, there are mutual funds for that. Okay. And I would uh, definitely be in there. I, I have one particular fund this year. It's up double digits this year. Okay. Okay. In, 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 in terms of assets, is it a good idea to be thinking long term to be saving up to buy a house or a condo in terms of from an investment is it now? Or? No, I would, you know, again, if you ever buy a house or a condo, un unless someone else is living in it, it is not an investment. Okay. It just simply isn't. Okay. Because I want to tell you something. I just bought a second house, and I've owned my first house for 11 years, and I owned two houses before that. And uh, the amount you spend owning a house, the maintenance, uh, the modifications you make to the house... Uh, the uh, whether it be adding a paint job or tearing up the carpet or whatever you end up doing, uh, gardening, landscaping, whatever, uh, it's a bad investment. It's right. what it is is, or it's a it's a way of forced savings, and you get to live in your investment, and that's the benefit you get. But okay. you can't plan on getting rich off owning a house. So, so you're saying rent then? No, I'm saying owning a house is good. Just don't expect to get rich doing it. Okay. 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 I understand. Like you, understand. you have to buy a house it's because split, split, split. you you have to buy a house or a condo. Split, split. Wait, wait. You have to buy. Yeah, a, listen, you want my advice or not? Okay, no, I'm looking. All right. 
if you have to buy a house or condo with the idea that it's some place you love living, that you're going to live there for a minimum of five years, mm-hmm. and you're buying it to live in, not as an investment. Okay. If okay. you if you have any doubts about how you feel about that, don't buy anything. Okay. Because these people, you know, a lot of the people who are getting burned, they're getting their houses taken away from them. These are the people who thought investing in a house was a good idea Mm -hmm. as an investment. Okay. And they're all finding out how bad an investment it was. Okay. This is a good time to buy real estate, good time to buy a house. Uh, But that's a house you plan to live in, not a house you plan to paint up and sell to the next sucker. Because we're in a recession. There's no suckers out there to buy your house. Okay. Okay. No. You, you make perfect sense. Make perfect sense. So if you want to own your own place and to be able to modify it any way well, you like, drill holes in the wall and make noise and all those things that you can do in a house, then this is a good time to buy one. So basically you're saying just keep my money in stocks, diversify it more. I, I heard you talk about um, Roth or some... Roth IRA, yes. Do yeah, you have an IRA at all? No, no. Well, well that would be your first investment, would be an IRA. You can now put $5,000 a year in an IRA. Okay. And, and what'll, what's... Uh, I'm, I'm not familiar with, with that. Well, you take $5,000 out of your net paycheck uh, in the course of a year and put it in a Roth IRA, or you can put it in all at one time if you like. And um, at the, when you finally withdraw that money at retirement, mm-hmm. you can withdraw it tax-free. So it will grow, and when you take it out, you will not pay one penny of tax on it. Okay. Okay. Do you uh, like that, uh, that idea not that appealing to you? What's the deal? No, I'll, I'll, I'll start doing that. I'll, I'll look into that. That, that. that definitely sounds good. It's definitely worth doing. I, I, I don't want the government taking my money. <laughs> well... The government has got, by the way, the money you put into a Roth IRA is taxed already, uh, but they won't get to tax it again. Yeah, yeah. Now, if you get a traditional IRA, it works the other way around. Mm-hmm. They, they take 5000 you take $5,000 of pre-tax income, so you get to, like, deduct the 5000 from from what your annual income is when you pay taxes. If you made $100,000 in a given year, now your uh, taxable income is 95000 okay? But then when you withdraw the money later at retirement which can begin at as early as 59 and a half years old. How they pick 59 and a half and not 59 or 60, I don't know. But uh, they will tax the money when you take it out. Okay. I I think you're better off getting a Roth IRA and having them tax the money uh, uh, now mm-hmm. because uh, I think taxes are only going to go up in the future, not down. Okay. 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 You don't sound too excited. I think you were hoping I would tell you how to double your money or something. <laughs> no, no, no. I'm I'm all in support of your idea. Because you know I, what they I, say. I, you I know, you double your money. Fold it. Okay. No, I want to find out how to increase my share of, my, uh, of, uh, of the money. I'm, I'm making a percent of my money now. I just want to make, make a bigger percent and diversify is, is, is what I'm getting from you. And, and, and I'm in favor of that. I, I just want to tell you, as someone who whom investing is a way of life, the stuff I do to make money is so boring to people, they don't want to hear it. They, they they are stultified when I start telling them what I did to find a mutual fund or find a stock. Most people can't be bothered, and that's why some people are rich and some people are not, because it's just like, um, I don't know, people who have an American Express Platinum card. I have all these people saying, what do you need a Platinum card for? Well, if you took the time to read what the benefits of the American Express Platinum Card are, you would find out you buy one business class or first class ticket, you get one free, and all these other benefits that people don't bother to find out about. And same thing with investing. People uh, people say, ooh, how can I make money? And they think it's like going to Caesar's Palace. You know, they're going to put uh, money down on the red and the black, and then they're going to win money. And in reality, it involves reading and uh, you know, doing some uh, a sh- a simple arithmetic. That most people are too lazy to do. They just can't be bothered. Yeah, no, that's definitely true about a lot of people. And, uh, boy, that phone is starting to sound really awful, but I uh, I do thank you for that. It's 1-800-5800-TOM. That's our telephone number. Let's say hello here to uh, Corey on the Tom Likas show. Hey, Tom, how are you doing? I'm doing okay. Um, first thing I, I want to say is, you know what, anybody that does not take your advice is just a moron and... And I've been listening to you for so long, uh, it's it's not even funny. Um, 
the one thing I wanted to bring up was the Curious George T-shirt. I mean, if I really got to ask you, you know, I mean, what do you think is more racist, that shirt or a BET comedy special? I I haven't seen a lot of BET comedy specials. I've seen Deaf Comedy Jam, which is on HBO. But... You know, and and it's the same thing. I mean, you know, all these comedians are out there, uh, you know, dropping the N word and and everything like that, making fun of every single race there is. And then here are people, you know, uh, making a stink about a T-shirt. And I just thought it was it was just hilarious. I mean, well, I, my opinion is somewhere in the middle. Um, I don't think the T-shirt is terribly funny, uh, but I also believe it's a free country. And I believe that if people want to sell a T-shirt, they should. But people protesting against it, that's stupid because it has the opposite effect of what you intended, which is it tells the entire country about something that a neighborhood would have known about before. Very true. Very true. Well, I just thought I'd bring that up. I mean, I just I just thought it was kind of interesting. You know, I mean, this T-shirt wouldn't have got any, you know, any... It wouldn't have it wouldn't have had anything at all if, if people hadn't made us think about it. It would have gone away, and, and nobody would have cared about it. You're absolutely right about that. Like it. Like 1-800-5800-TOWN. Like 1-800-5800-866. I got at least 10 women I can call right now who are between the 7 and the 10 who will come over here and do my every desire because of the things that Tom likes has taught me. It's the Tom Likes Show. It's the Tom Liga Show. Wide open telephones on this Friday. 1-800-5800-TOM. That's our telephone number. Jason on the Tom Liga Show. Hello. Hi, Tom. How you doing? How you doing? Pretty good. Just sitting in traffic. Um, I was calling my um my question was, how, what's your opinion on um those um idiots in Utah? About the whole Derek Fisher situation, about him leaving for his daughter to come to Los Angeles for her care. You mean the fact that they're the fact that they're booing him? Yeah, they still keep booing him. <laughs> well, I think booing him is just plain stupid because Kobe Bryant says that. Of course, the results don't actually uh, bear this out. But Kobe Bryant says when they boo Derek Fisher, they are more motivated to win. Yeah, I understand that, but it's just it's just like last night, if you were watching the. Um, the game last night with the Spurs and the um, Hornets, how how they um, hurt David West, and um, they started chanting Ori right after it when he pushed him into the back. It's just like, I don't know, just NBA fans are kind of taking it too far now, but you know, it is kind of giving them a feel. But well, I think but, you know, now the, the way the fans reacted uh, regarding Ori is very different uh, from the Derek Fisher thing. Uh, Derek Fisher never harmed anybody. Never fouled anybody, never punched anybody, never hurt anybody. Uh, Derek Fisher left. And by the way, to come to the Lakers took a big pay cut because the Lakers, what did they have to uh, pay him, the mid-level exception or something? They had like, they didn't have money under the salary cap to pay him what he was making in Utah. And yeah. and so when he left, there's no doubt that Derek Fisher left because his daughter, uh, who has cancer of like the eyeball it's 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 rare in children and very difficult to deal with there's no doubt he needed to be in a city with the kind of hospitals and doctors that could handle that kind of thing yeah and, and, and the people in utah who, who are booing him are just a bunch of idiots yeah they are because he, he did leave that um his daughter's care just to play in that um game that game when he did come back to hit those important shots that's why i don't get there's this I don't know. This has been idiots ever since I've been little. I've just seen it growing up. <laughs> yeah. I just wanted to see what your opinion was about well, that. they're just jealous because they never won anything in Utah, and they probably never will. <laughs> but can you take me out Coke style? I certainly can. Oh. Oh. This is about us. Oh. She's so special to me. Oh. Yeah, it beats in my heart. Oh. Yeah, the air I breathe. Oh. She's so special to me. Oh. One eight hundred five eight hundred Tom. Here comes Scott on the Tom like his show. Hello. Hey Tom. Hey. Best Buy. What did you say? I, said, I want to tell you about what happened to me at Best Buy with those pregnant ladies expecting mother signs. You sound like Bill O'Reilly. Calm down. Oh, I had security and everything come. It was great. What happened? Oh, I parked in her spot because it was a hot day and I didn't want to walk from the other end. She said she's expecting, and I said, well, I wouldn't expect to park here then. 
So what did security do? They asked me when I please move, and I said, is this a city ordinance? They said no, and I said, then I'm not moving. <laughs> Good. I love that. She didn't. I'll bet. Did she try Kia? We're on the air. I... Sorry, Tom. Jesus. So, um... She didn't try to do anything after that. No, she's a 40-year-old fat woman. <laughs> fat, knocked-up woman. I don't know if she was even knocked up. She was just fat. Oh, you don't even think she was pregnant? It's too big to tell. <laughs> Thank you for that, Scott. one 800 800 tom that's our telephone number. Let's say hello here to Andreas on the Tom Likas show. Hey, Tom. How you doing? How you doing? All right. Just right here having trouble. I want to see uh, what advice you could give me because I have made every mistake that I shouldn't have made. I see. Well, I was married. I got separated. And I got, I got in, I, I fell in love, I guess. I felt I got together with someone too soon. And that was three years ago, and uh, I have a kid now. And uh, two weeks ago, uh, my wife's uh, sister moved in. and. Uh, well, how did that happen? I don't even know. One day what do you mean you don't know? <laughs> you don't know. Your wife didn't talk to you about it? Not at all. I came home from work, and uh, there she was. And, what, and what, did you, what was your wife's explanation for this? Uh, that she having uh, problems with her husband herself, so she wanted a little time away, but it's been two weeks, and it's getting kind of frustrating. This Well, this shouldn't have been your problem. But if you had a prenup, you would have had that spelled out. Yeah. Yeah, that's true. Do you know my last prenup did spell that out? It also spelled out gifts and loans to family members. Right. Said, out, not happening. Yeah, that's true. I just I just don't know how to tell her, you know, because I like I got up from work at two and I've been driving around. I don't want to go home because what am I gonna do? I mean, she's taking care of my baby too because my baby's only five months old. But who is your your wife? Uh, no, my uh, um, sister-in-law. Your sister-in-law. Yeah, yeah, she's taking care of the baby right now. I see. And you don't she's... want it. You don't want her in the house. Not really. <laughs> But did you? Why didn't you tell your wife this from the beginning? I have mentioned it to her because this is not the first time. I have mentioned it to her, but she told me it wouldn't happen again. But here we are again. Did you tell her? Hey, you said this would never happen again. Uh, no. No. <laughs> no. Why not? No. Why not? Um, I I don't know. I felt I felt bad because of her sister what she was going through, but it's getting too much, you know. Well, you have to tell your wife. And not even that. And besides that, her mom lives close by, so they're always coming and visit. See, my family, we don't visit where we're all in our own little world. But her family, they're all close, so. Well, uh, but this is something, had you had a prenup, you could have dealt with this issue before you got married. Exactly. Which and I should have learned from the first time. Oh, you mean you had another marriage? Yeah, I was uh, married for 11 years. Wait a minute. You're only 30. Exactly. How, how old were you when you got married the first time? Uh, well, I was 17 and she was 13. Oh. Yeah. Was that even legal? Um, well, you know, with a parent's permission, it, you, you could do it. But no, no, but the, no, no, but the, <laughs> you didn't get the parent's permission before you stood to the first time. No. No, we were we were dating, and then uh, I was. The, she so was first, 19. you were illegally boning her, 19. and then you got her parents' permission after you illegally boned her. <laughs> right. And let me guess. Said, let me guess. You knocked her up. No, no, not at all. No kids. So why did you get married? Uh, I don't know. I was going through a lot of things, and uh, herself as well. That's that that's not a good reason to get married. That's a good reason to not get married. 
Right. I, I, I didn't see all the everything that you point out. I, they were there, but I didn't, I didn't, I didn't see them because. All right, but once I, you were married for ten years or eleven years, whatever it was, uh, you should have known, and you shouldn't have done it again. Exactly. And then you did myself. it again. Exactly. Exactly. And now I'm, I really can't get out. I, I'm not gonna leave my baby. You know. Oh, Jesus. I should have learned from that. Yes, time. yes, you should have. I was, you know, I was safe. No kids, nothing at all. Your wife runs the household. So right now, yeah. Not right now. Well, I don't know till when. I, She's I don't the how, boss. I don't know how long I'm going to take this. And I have oh, yeah, say, what are you going to do about it? Well, I heard you say if you pay child support, it's a lot cheaper than being at, at home, you know? Yeah, I'll, I'll believe you're going to do that when I see it. Yeah, that, that's where I'm kind of like, you know, with a sore against the wall. Because I don't know. I mean, I don't want to leave my baby, you know? Oh, well, there I you go. So you're not going to do it. You're not going to do anything. Right now, I don't think I will. I just don't know what to do. The other day, I got in an argument with her, and I called your show, but I couldn't get on. But I, I'm getting really frustrated. Yeah, but uh, whose fault is this? I know it's I all mine. Right. All mine. All my. You didn't have to do this. Not at all. I thought because, you know, the baby, I wanted a baby, but I also wanted my mom to be close to me. Because, see, I, I, I wasn't, I, I stopped living with my mom when I was 18. That's when I moved in with my first wife. Because her, her dad was a cop, so... <laughs> I kind of had to move in with her. <laughs> well, I don't understand. You had to move in because her dad was a cop? Right. He knew that uh, I had a relationship with her. so An he illegal, an illegal relationship. Exactly. Exactly. But she had, she had a baggage, too, because uh, her dad had abu sexually abused her when she was younger. <laughs> That's fantastic. Exactly. And, and you, didn't see, you didn't see that as a red flag, huh? Not at all. I was young and stupid. Probably mm -hmm. I still am. Mm-hmm. Hang on a second, Andreas. Let me get Ryan in here. Ryan, what did you want to say to Andreas? I say he goes under the kitchen sink to the left of the garbage disposal, get his balls out of the jar, reattach him, and put the sister to the test, and then tell the wife, and they'll both be gone, and you're on your own. Be a man. Stand up for yourself, dude. Put the sister to the test. <laughs> yeah, I... I've been wanting to do that, but I'm thinking, I mean, I don't, with, about her, I don't care as much, but I care more about my baby, you know? Uh, yeah, but you could still take care of the baby without those two chicks running your life. You could do it on your own in your own place and take care of the baby. They're happy, and you could be more assertive. Do as dry as a popcorn fart, dude. Get your balls back on your body, use them, and get out. Be a man. Step up. Yeah, she's at work right now, so probably when she gets, gets home, I'm probably going to tell her that. That's you, wait, wait, you're going to tell her, you're going to tell her what? Uh, her sister to live, because, uh, I mean, I, I pay everything. You know, she works, but I pay everything. Well, that's another thing I'm doing wrong, you know? Everything I'm doing wrong. You've been a listener, Andreas. How, how did you let that happen? I don't know. I just, she's new to this country, so I was, you know, trying to help her out so she could, you know, uh, bill her credit and all that. Because she, she was actually born here, but she was right out of the States. Why is this your problem? I don't know. Um, oh, my seems, God. You're a pussy. That's why this stuff is all happening to you. I think it's because uh, we were raised only by our mother. Because uh, my brothers, I got two other brothers, and they also were taken advantage of by uh, females. My brother didn't finish college because uh, he knocked out some lady that was about my mom's age. My other brother, he got together with someone, but they got separated. And now he's in the Navy, so he's the only one that's doing good right now. Mm, Jesus. Out of there. You're killing me, Larry. 1-800-5800-TOM. 1-800-5800-866. You really do not like women, do you? I love women, as long as uh, their breasts are in my face. It's the Tom Likes Show. From Hollywood, it's my favorite radio program, the Tom Likas Show, 1-800-5800-TOM. 
Anything goes here. 1-800-5800-866 is our telephone number. This is Ron on the Tom Likas Show. Hello. Good afternoon, Tom. Long-time listener, first-time caller. Hey, as I told your screener, I'm not in your demographic, but I'm wondering, what's going on? You've been quite a jerk the last two days. You know, you the last two good. days I've been a jerk. No, no, I've, not, I don't I've been a jerk for years. I, don't, I, don't, I, I really appreciate how you run your program. I think uh, there's a method to your madness that even someone from my demographic can understand and appreciate. But uh, you've been throwing some cruelty. Uh, Give me the no examples. Reason. I'd like to hear them. Uh, well, I mean, just a pregnant lady in a parking spot is not a funny thing. We've talked uh, about that many times. This is not I, new. This is not I, something I, for the I last two days. Too. I have told my listeners to park in those parking spaces that are set aside for expected mothers. All our listeners to park there, and I've done it many times. Well, I understand, Tom. That's when you're a jerk. I, I'm a no. I'm a jerk much more than that. I'm a jerk well, most of the time. Well, I just, I, I just think that uh, you've disappointed, you know, me, and that's okay. You well, but as, as a 58 year old male who's out of the demographic, I'm not worried about disappointing you. The guys who like this show, who are in the target demographic, that's who I'm concerned about offending. If I offend uh, them, I'm, I'm concerned, but I'm not concerned about offending you. Listen, a lot of guys outside yours, the demographic, okay, listen to your program. That's fine, but the point is the show is not made for them. Anybody with a radio has a right to listen. But the show is not directed at or produced to, for the satisfaction of people outside the target audience. Uh, and you're yeah. outside the target. Do you understand marketing and oh, demographics? Well, job. good. You know, so you know that what I'm saying, so you know, you know that what I'm saying is true. You're not as erudite as you think you are. You oh, yes. People. Really? You guess. You do. You is that so? You had a lot of call. Your last caller telling that guy to man up and where his balls are. Right. Okay, at the end of the day. What does that have to do with being erudite, sir? What does that have to do with being erudite? I want the answer now. What does that have to do with being erudite? Answer my question or you're off. You're done. You're finished. You will never finish what you're saying until you answer this question. What does what you said have to do with my being erudite? You try to play that card by people who don't understand nor have your success. What, what does that caller have to do with my being erudite? Well, you aren't is what it has no, to do. No, no, but you, but you see, your your argument makes absolutely no sense. You're saying two disjointed things that have nothing to do with each other. Yeah, not, you are quoting what a caller said, and then you're saying that I'm not erudite. The, the way to prove I'm not erudite is to quote me, not the caller. Well, you're quote, quoting you. Is just you the quoted you the mean. caller. You didn't quote me. You quoted a caller. That you, now, you can talk about whether the caller is erudite, but the telling me I'm not erudite and using as your evidence the fact that you don't like what a caller said, uh-uh. You're not going to slide that one past me, pal. You're not that smart. Well, that's debatable about who's the smartest. You think so? Oh, I'm sure. Well, that's why I'm down here at the radio station making a seven-figure income, and that's why you're calling in as grist for my mill, using up your own cell phone minutes to talk to me. You can't buy and sell me, Tom. Uh, I probably can. Oh, you probably cannot. Yes, I probably can. And and just because your demographic makes no money and has no wealth. Oh, well, on the contrary, sir, read the Scarborough Report. Our listeners are the most highly educated, highly compensated individuals who listen to the radio. They make no If you money. knew anything about the radio business, you would know that only 1% of the people who listen ever call a radio program, and the other 99% are people like you who listen like voyeurs. And the demographics and the psychographics of the listener are way different from those of the callers. But you're not in my business, you don't understand my business, and you're speaking from ignorance. Well, that's always your boulder of reference, Tom, that when someone doesn't agree with your bombast... No, 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 I want to... No, no, I'll tell you what, this is not a matter of opinion. I want to hear facts. I want to hear your statistical evidence, empirical proof of what you're saying. Where are you getting your uh, documentation from? Well, the demographic of your caller base and the age range... You don't know what the demographic... You don't know... But first of all, you don't know... You don't know what the demographics are. Second of all, I just told you that anyone in this business knows that the callers comprise 1% of the listenership. What the callers are tells you nothing about the listenership. Well, that was my earlier point when you said that your target... Okay, my target audience, not my target caller. My target audience... 
Do you understand the difference between a caller sure. and, and the general and audience? And there's certainly, you're, certainly your target audience, okay, is comprised of a large makeup. Your callers are somewhere between... The target the audience does not include... I, you know what? You like to think of yourself as younger. Your target audience does not I'm include not you. I'm not young at all. It, I just said it doesn't include you. I, I understand. My target audience does not include you, and therefore, if you don't like the way I'm doing the show, it means I'm doing it right, because the show okay. is not that's produced a, for you. That's a fair point, Tom. That's a point I expect. But you're talk, but you're, actually your show is amusing to me and my demographic. Well, that's fine, but, okay. but again, if, you're, if it ever offends you, it's not my job to care. Fair enough. Fair enough. And it rarely In fact, me. well, it, you know, maybe maybe it should be offending you more often. Maybe I'm not offending people in your age group enough. You know, there's a message to a lot of what you do, okay? I've got three sons. There's a message to a lot of what you do. The way you do it is why you have the ratings you do. That's right. Okay. And that's why your your critique, your criticism is irrelevant. Okay. That's fair enough. I'm just telling you that you... You're are, out of the target demographic. You have no background in my industry. You don't know how to do what I do. You have no uh, history of doing it. I've been uh, 20 years on the air in Southern California. That's 20 more years than you've been doing it. And so I would say that uh, you are an amateur. You're a rank amateur calling in here trying to tell me how to do my job. I, I would be a fool to take your advice. Number one, I was not telling you how to do your job. Uh, uh, yes, you're telling me that the show is too are. rude. I've been too rude. I've been a jerk the last couple of days. I am a jerk every day if I'm doing it right. Okay. I've listened to you only since the year I've lived in California. And in the year that I've listened to you since I've been a resident here, you are not always rude. You are awesome. I didn't say I'm always rude. I'm always a jerk. And my goal is to be a jerk as much as possible. You're often sensational. Okay, you're, and you're, I do what it takes to be the number one show in my target demographic, and I am, and that's it. And I enjoy, and I enjoy it. But if I you enjoy don't enjoy it, it, just remember it. That's because you're not on the target I know, audience. And I know you don't care whether my age enjoys it. However, I'm just saying my observation, meaningless or not, is that you took the low road a few times. In a I take the low road a lot. Do. Are you uh, kidding? I'll be the first one to tell you. We take the low road. We take people out JFK senior style, JFK junior style. Uh, I mean, that's all, that's all hilarious. I'm waiting for Elvis style. Well, there's a lot of people who think that's pretty tight. Hang on a second. Hey, John, what did you want to say to Ron here? Hey, Tom, I want to tell this guy. Hey, watch your is. mouth. Hey. I didn't call to let some jerk. You, you do not. You do not curse hey, on the air. It's illegal. We've got your phone number, Ron, and the federal communication. <laughs> there he goes. The federal communications commission is fining people for using language like that. It's three hundred and twenty-five thousand dollars a violation, and we've got your phone number, you moron. And I'll tell you what: if anything like that ever got on the air. I'm not paying the three hundred twenty-five thousand. You're going to pay it. We will dig you up and serve you to the FCC like a prime rib. You'll pay because that's the law. Person who uh, makes the, uh, the the uh, the obscene statement on the air that that person gets fined. It's no longer the radio station. So as far as I'm concerned, if you get on the air and you use the F word like you just tried to do, we will hunt you down and turn you into the feds. That's it. Go ahead and try that again, you moron. I love this guy calling in trying to tell me how intelligent he is and how well-read he is. And, and then he uses the F word. That's great. Jesus. Gabino on the Tom Likas show. Hello. Hey, Tom. I was... uh. I was wondering if you saw that photograph yesterday. It was up in uh, San Francisco about... Uh, the gay marriage house just got uh, repealed, and they showed a picture of the the flag, the bear flag from California, and it had attached to it at the bottom the color, the, the gay flag onto it. And I was like, oh, that's rather disrespectful and a little bit of a desecrating the flag. And I was wondering what you thought about that. I, I, I don't, uh, I'm not one of those prudes when it comes to flags and so-called desecration. The flag of California? Ooh, don't desecrate that. Ooh. The Tom Likas Show.